Hey guys, Chris here with the good old gamer. So over the weekend, we got some news on the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti. Now these are rumors still at this point, but since this is going to be coming out in just a couple of days now, more than likely these numbers are correct and accurate. This seems to be the case. Usually within about a week, the rumors seem to be right on point. So like with most Nvidia news here recently, it looks like we have an upside and then there's a downside, of course. So we're going to cover that here today. And I want to get your guys feedback in the comment section down below on how you guys feel about this whole video card situation that we find ourselves in at this point. All right. So the news really isn't anything that we didn't already know. The GTX 1660 Ti will be based on the TU116 chip. So this is basically a... Turing chip without RT cores and without tensor cores if these new rumors are to be believed. Now we see that we have 1536 CUDA cores, 6 gigabytes of GDDR6, which is supposedly going to be coming in at 12 gigabit instead of 14 gigabit like on the uh, 2060, 2070 and all the rest of the cards. And it's supposedly coming in at $279 with a cut down version coming in with 1280 CUDA cores sometime next month, early in March, uh, with six and three gigabytes of GDDR5. And this will be starting off at $229. Now there's one benchmark for Final Fantasy 15 down here showing the GTX 1660 Ti's performance level. And surprise, surprise, it performs about on par with the GTX 1070. Now this makes sense with the whole Turing architecture. The RTX 2060 has the same amount of CUDA cores as the GTX 1070 and has replaced it in price also, by the way, but also performs one tier higher at the GTX 1070 Ti level. Now, this makes sense. You cut down the CUDA cores a little bit, you lower the performance one tier. So you go from 1070 Ti performance, lower the CUDA cores, now you have 1070 performance. It makes sense. Now the upside to this is we are now going to be able to get GTX 1070 level performance for $279. Now that is a good thing. That's more performance for less money. Much like with the RTX 2060 where you get the 1070 Ti level performance for $349. Although these aren't the gains that we like to see generation over generation as far as price to performance goes, the price to performance is at least superior to the previous generation. Unlike with the RTX 2080, the RTX 2070, and the Radeon 7, which offer no performance gains at their respective price points. They're actually delivering the same amount of performance for the same amount of money. So that's the major upside to these new cards. At the very least, the RTX 2060 on down will be delivering superior price to performance compared to the previous generation. Now this does come at a small cost of lower VRAM. The RTX 2060, while it performs the same as a GTX 1070 Ti, it has two gigabytes of VRAM less. And the same can be said for the 1660 Ti compared to the GTX 1070, which also has eight gigabytes of RAM versus six. Now, this is just my speculation, but the GTX 1660 non-TI, with its 1280 CUDA cores being at the level of the GTX 1060, will likely match the RX 590 in performance. To make things a little bit simpler, I went ahead and just made my own little graph here. So essentially, we have the 1070 Ti at 349, 1070 at 279, RX 590 performance for 229 and likely RX 580 and GTX 1060 performance at $179. So once again, at the very least, we are getting better price to performance with these video cards over here. And I do believe that AMD will lower their price of the RX 590 to match once this card comes out. Now, once again, that's just my opinion of the situation. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. We'll have to wait and see. Now here's the downside. The downside is, well, we're definitely not getting the same gains that we're used to getting. The 200 to $249 price point, or you could even say the 229 to 279 price points, if you want to stretch it a little bit, add some inflation in there. We usually like to see a two tier gain. So the GTX 1060, for example, which will likely be equivalent to the 1650 over here, 
that was as fast as the GTX 980. So that was two tiers higher. But instead, for 279, we're only going to be getting 1070 level performance. So this is not the type of gain that we're used to seeing in this market. And that sucks, but it's at least better than what we're seeing from Radeon 7 the 2080 and the 2070. So it's like a good and a bad all at the same time. The part that I find most interesting though, however, is the fact that the TU-116 without the tensor cores and RT cores should be a much smaller, much cheaper to produce die. With the much smaller die, these cards could be much, much lower. And to me, it negates the argument that the RTX cards cost so much because of their die size. These cards don't have all of that, and yet it's priced right in line with the RTX pricing. So to me, that's a major negative right there. These cards could be significantly less expensive because of the fact that they're so much smaller and because they're lacking features. These cards could literally have all of those same features and still fall in the same price stack that they are right now. So that's a real shame that NVIDIA is basically just taking advantage of the market and continuing the RTX price scheme. Now, like I said, we can't really blame NVIDIA entirely because AMD isn't doing anything to change this. The RX 590 came out just a few months ago, and instead of replacing the RX 580 at the $249 price point, they decided to go ahead and generate a new price point at the $279 mark. And the same thing can be said about Radeon 7. Now, you can say that it costs, you know, umpteen millions of dollars to make the thing. That doesn't really matter. It doesn't change the fact that this does not push the market in a more performance for a lower price category. So you're not getting more performance for less money. You're getting the same performance for the same amount of money. And this is the exact same argument we had against the GeForce RTX 2080. It is no faster than a 1080 Ti, not in any meaningful way. You actually lose VRAM here, so compared to the RX uh, Radeon 7, I mean, and the 1080 Ti, this is actually the worst value at the 699 price point. At least with these, we are seeing a performance gain. I'm just not really thrilled about the fact that the mainstream market is now being pushed up, because let's be real about this. This card should have been called the GTX 2050 Ti. This should have been the 2050 and this should be, I don't know, a 2040, somewhere in that range. I, I don't know what the specs are on this thing. I have a feeling it'll be around the 1060 level of performance, but we don't really know anything yet. But if we follow the track, that seems to be the way that NVIDIA is going here. This new 1660 could have separated itself from the RTX price scheme because it's not even labeled RTX, and it's not even a 2000 series card. So had they launched this at, let's say, 229, this one at 179, let's say this guy at 149 or something, that would have been a stupendous value. And I think a lot of people would have felt a lot better about these cards. But at the $279 mark, it's still delivering GTX 1070 performance at a much lower price point, but it's not worth the gains. And you don't get, whether you feel RTX is a useless feature or DLSS is a useless feature, which I think most of us do at this point, but regardless, this card, you at least have all of that, and it's priced right in line with the rest of these cards. So to me, that's a major negative, and this is something that NVIDIA could have really gotten a strong win just by dropping it down one more tier in price. So I, I think at 249 this would have been really good, maybe 199 and even 149 something like that. Even somewhere in the middle, I think it would have been a much, much more compelling product. And I think a lot of people would have probably upgraded to those, considering their stiff competition from the secondhand market. Right now, GTX 1060 6 gigabytes are going for about $150 secondhand, and the RX 580s are going for about $120 to $140, somewhere in that range, depending on if you get lucky with, you know, a, a good find or something. But they're going in that range pretty regularly. And as I've shown you a few times on here, the RX 580 in newer titles is about 5% faster than the GTX 1060, which means that for about $140, it's more than likely going to be able to beat this 1650 at a lower price point. Granted, that's secondhand and that's the used market, but you have to understand, once there is a used market, that's the real world value that people place on those products. 
That means that's the price point that people feel the RX 580 and GTX 1060 are actually worth because that's what people will pay to go ahead and get those. So much like the RX 590, I don't know where this one's really going to land. I, I don't know how many people are going to be too excited about that level of performance, even at $229. As it's not really a 1440p card at that point, it might be a higher refresh 1080p card. But in all honesty, you really want at least a 1070 level performance for even high refresh 1080p and especially for entry level 1440p. So honestly, I don't really see how that's going to stack up. And realistically, if this is at the 1060 level of performance or RX 580, somewhere in that range, you know, with the used market being as strong as it is, I just don't see how well either of these two are really going to do. This card, however, I can see a market for that because there are a lot of people out there with GTX 1063 gigabytes and maybe something like an RX 570. That's going to be a pretty good upgrade for those folks. But if you currently have a GTX 1060 or an RX 580, realistically, the RTX 2060 or something like a uh, really good deal on a Vega 56 is really the only upgrade for you. These aren't really fast enough for it to be worth it, in my opinion. So those have been my thoughts on the situation. We're getting better price to performance. That's a good thing. NVIDIA is still charging way too freaking much. And the fact that they're using smaller die doesn't change the price scheme. That's really annoying to me. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I want to hear your thoughts on this one. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really does help me out. Thank you so much. You guys have a great day. And I will catch you guys in the next video.